Hi, welcome to our video where we'll be discussing equinus contractures and how to prevent them. What is an equinus contracture? An equinus contracture is the inability to bring the foot up to a neutral position, that is, a right angle to the lower leg. Equinus contractures are so named um, because of horses, which are equine creatures, and horses essentially w walk on their toes, which is what an equinus contracture is perceived to be. Before we proceed, let's do a quick revision of the relevant anatomy, looking mainly at the muscles of the lower leg. The muscles of the lower leg can be divided into three compartments, anterior, posterior, and lateral. The anterior compartment has muscles which are involved in dorsiflexion of the foot, extending the digits, as well as inverting the foot. These muscles are supplied by the deep perineal nerve, which is a branch of the sciatic nerve. The muscles in this group include tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, and fibularis tertius. Now we'll move on to the posterior compartment. The posterior compartment has muscles which are involved in plantar flexion at the ankle, flexing the digits, as well as inverting the foot. These muscles are supplied by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. The posterior compartment muscles can be divided into superficial and deep. The superficial muscles include gastrocnemius with its medial and lateral head and which has a tendon um, known as the Achilles tendon. Um, also in the superficial group we have plantaris and soleus. In the deep group we have popliteus, flexor hallucis longus, tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus. Lastly, we will look at the lateral group. These muscles are involved in everting the foot. They are supplied by the superficial perineal ner nerve, which is a branch of the sciatic nerve. The muscles in this group include fibularis longus as well as fibularis brevis. There are many causes for an equinus contracture. These can largely be grouped into congenital, where the trait is inherited and tightness is present at birth, or acquired, where tightness develops from being in a cast, being on crutches, or frequently wearing high heeled shoes. This leads to tightness in the Achilles tendon or calf muscles, namely the soleus or gastrocnemius muscle, and can lead to impairment in dorsiflexion of the foot. Con equinus contractures may also result from leg length discrepancy, where one leg is shorter than the other. Less often, equinus contractures may be associated with spasms in the calf muscle or certain neurological diseases, such as neuromuscular disease. Equinus contractures can have many complications. These depend largely on how the patient compensates for the inability to bend their foot properly at the ankle. Conditions that can develop include calf cramping, tendonitis, where there's inflammation of the Achilles tendon, metatarsalgia, where there's pain or callousing on the ball of the foot, arthritis of the midfoot, involving the middle area of the foot, pressure sores on the ball of the foot or the arch, ankle pain, as well as shin splints. These are but a few. The diagnosis of equinus contractures is largely clinical and is based on clinical examination of the ankle's range of motion when the knee is flexed as well as when it is extended and would show that the range of motion is decreased. Special investigations would include x-rays, the definitive management of equinus contractures may be surgical or non-surgical. Surgical techniques involve tendon or muscle releasing techniques in cases where the muscle or tendon is too tight. Non-surgical treatment would involve night splints, where the foot is placed in a splint at night to keep it in a neutral position that helps reduce the tightness of the calf muscle. Heel lifts, where the heel a heel is placed inside the shoe or a shoe with a moderate heel is worn. This reduces the stress of the Achilles tendon when walking and reduces the symptoms. And lastly, arch supports or orthotic devices. Um, these fit into the shoe and are often prescribed to keep the weight distributed evenly and to help control muscle or tendon imbalance. As such, the following four principles for preventing equinus contractures are recommended. Principle 1. Encouraging regular periods of daily standing and or walking. 
A minimum of two to three hours of daily standing and or walking is necessary in addition to other modalities of prevention. Principle two, passive stretching of muscles and joints. Stretching should be started as soon as possible and should be a part of a regular morning and evening routine. So now I'm going to demonstrate some stretch exercises that are done in the prevention of equinus contractures due to tight muscle. So the first one is called the passive dorsiflexion. So with one hand, you're going to stabilize the ankle at the talus and then with the other hand, you're going to hold the hind foot and force the ankle into dorsiflexion and keep the foot in this position up to a count of 15. And this exercise can be repeated up to 10 to 15 times in a session. And the same exercise can be done for the other foot. And now the next exercise is called the passive eversion. So with one hand, you're going to stabilize the foot at the talus and hold uh, the mid foot with the other hand and force, and force the foot into eversion and hold it in this position uh, for, for 15 seconds. And then the same, you can repeat this exercise 15, 10 to 15 times in a session and you should also do it for the other foot. Now, the third exercise is called the runner stretch. In this exercise, you have the patient pushing against the wall with the painful leg in full extension and the foot flat on the ground. So the objective is to have the muscles of the calf and Achilles tendon to be stretched. So, and the other, the other leg will be forward, bent at the knees. The patient maintains this position with a good stretch of the calf and the Achilles tendon without any pain. So she'll maintain this position for 15 seconds and this exercise is to be repeated 10 to 15 times in a session and then when she's done she can now do the same exercise to the other leg. Principle 3. The limb should be placed in a resting position and this position should oppose or minimize flexion. The most effective way to achieve this is with the patient lying on their stomach that is prone. This effectively stretches out the flexor muscles. And principle four, splinting for prevention of equinus deformity generally is used. This includes ankle foot orthotics, so AFOs, or, nighting, or nighttime resting splints. These have been used to maintain a 90 degree angle of the foot relative to the tibia. That brings us to the end of our video. Thanks for watching. This video was made by Kahiso Mochwane, Felicia Sibia, and Chloe Ile.